joined by William Mary, head coach Tony Shaver to his left, Daniel Dixon to his right, Greg Malinowski. We'll start with a comment from Coach Shaver and then uh, open up for some questions. Well, heartbreaking loss, no doubt about it. Uh, you know, we, we played a great team today. They, they've proven for four months that they're the best team in this league. And uh, they, they find a way to respond. They find a way to answer. A lot of close games for them. Tonight's another example, but they find a way to make the plays they have to have down a stretch. I thought for our guys, I thought our competitive spirit was a really high level tonight. I think we played really hard. Love the look in the kids' eyes all night long. Uh, we, we really battled and competed hard. It meant a lot to us. Uh, I would say, secondly, our execution just wasn't quite good enough. You know, it really wasn't. We, uh, I'd like to see a little better ball movement out of our team tonight. Um, but, boy, we really competed. I mean, to hold them to, well, I guess it got to 70, 70 points, uh, you know, right there, even with them or, or so close to it on the, the rebounds. You know, we really played hard, really played hard. Question. you got to do both to win a great game. You, you know, you got to compete and you got to, have a high level of execution as well. Okay. Tony, uh, Coach Mihalik said this is a game they should have lost, uh, you know, but they found a way to win it. Do you look at it as where did we lose this or how did we lose it? Not really. I mean, I mean, again, that's, they did what they've done all year long. That's find a way to win close ball games. I wish we had a hand. We had a two-point lead and one or two possessions. Uh, you know, Omar had a. Uh, I'm not. Hard to recycle all the, the sequence of plays, but Omar had a wide open three on the wing that didn't go in. It looked like he was in, didn't go in for us. We had a two point lead in the ball one time. Liked to get a little bit better shot, but you know, they're good defensively. There's a reason they're number one, but uh, um, I, you know, I don't, I don't look at it that way. Tony, you guys did a, a really good job on Green, especially until about probably the final <clears throat> three or four minutes. He seemed to make a lot of plays for him. You could just sort of talk about what he was able to do. That's why he's the best player in the league. I mean, he finds a way. I mean, he. Uh, I'm really not admired a kid in this league any more than I have him. I mean, he just he. He makes the right play 99.9% .9 of the time, whether it's a shot or the pass or the deflection on the defensive end. And, and it's what they, they did to win the game. They isolated uh, Green and they isolated uh, Tanksley, uh, you know, in the foul line area. And, and uh, you know, with shooters that they have on the perimeter, it's hard to help a lot. And uh, so it comes down to a little bit of one-on-one, -on -one and, and they're really good in that game. We, you know, we did a good job on Green. I mean, we, you know, we trapped him off of ball screens. Uh, all night long. I don't, I don't know how much they've seen that. I don't know, but it was very effective for us, I thought. But uh, took it out of his hands a little bit. It, it, it helped us keep Rokas from the screen and roll, uh, you know, so it was a, a good thing, but not quite good enough. Greg, it was a big day for you, obviously. Um, you know, the bench has been the story for you guys the last couple of days. And what does it say about this team that seemingly anybody can score the points on a given night? Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> just going out and my teammates having confidence in me, Connor, Oliver, and Jack, like you said, uh, we've had great play off the bench recently. And I think it really has showed these past couple of games. And if I could ask uh, Daniel, uh, you know, obviously you hit the big shot last year. What were you thinking when, when you and then Greg followed up with those back-to-back -back threes to tie it uh, at 65? Did you think that things were going to go your way at that point? Uh, obviously, I was, it gave me confidence and it gave our team confidence, I think. Uh, but we just didn't execute down the stretch. Um, but no, it definitely gave us confidence, and Greg played a hell of a game. And uh, those were two pretty big plays. You guys had the ball. I think it was tied. There was about 50 seconds left. It seemed like from the bench, maybe you were hoping for a two for one or, or a little bit more urgency there. And, not really. I mean, we we uh, we wanted a good shot, but we we really weren't concerned about the two for one right there. Not a bad play, but we weren't really talking in terms of that right there. And and then any just the way last year was and the way this year starts so physically with the game and any uh, you guys probably anticipated that coming in, but how'd you feel you guys responded to that kind of the early foul and the the pretty physical tempo? Well, I, you know, I think they're the most physical team in the league probably along with Taos and, uh, and we knew it'd be a physical game and uh, you know, one of the things we talked to our guys about, we had to be the toughest team on the floor tonight and, and I don't know if we were or not, but we certainly battled hard. We battled hard for loose balls and rebounds to hold our own on, on the glass the way we did uh, you know, I'm proud of the guys for that. Um, to the players, uh, could you guys sort of talk about the last time you played them, they really hurt you on the pick and roll. This time, they did very little with that. In fact, I think Gusty's only had two points. <laughs> yeah, we made the adjustment uh, to trap them off the ball screen, and so that helped us out, uh, having somebody take the roll. 
Uh, so it kind of made him obviously less effective, and uh, it worked for us. Uh, Coach, one of the ways that Hofstra countered that, though, uh, after you took away the pick and roll with Wanye and, and Ren Rock, was uh, it, I mean, Tanksley was very aggressive inside. He's seven of ten from two, even though he struggled from three. Uh, he led them in scoring, and 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 Bowie as well came off the bench and helped them a lot and kind of sparked them as well. Uh, mm -hmm. Did you anticipate that, or? I mean, Tanks is one of the best players in the league, so yeah, I'm not surprised. I wish, you know, one of the things when you when you try to take one thing away from them, it leaves other things open. But by doubling Green. And on the skip pass to Tanksley, he really attacked our closeouts and did a good job there. We weren't good enough in that area. But, uh, you know, basically we wanted somebody else to try to beat us, and uh, Tanksley did that. They're, they're very balanced. I mean, where do you – they got a great team. I mean, they have a great team. They've shown it for four, four months, you know. I know this loss is right in the books. You guys may have an opportunity to play in the postseason or even the NIT. What, what would you think about the opportunity uh, to go back there and, uh, and what that experience was like? Well, obviously, it'd be great. Um, just another chance to keep playing. Obviously, you want to play as long as you can. Uh, and really, hopefully for our seniors, uh, that would be a great thing as well. Uh, Dixon. Oh. Go, ahead. Go ahead. Dixon, you and your team exhibited some really great teamwork. So is, is that something to build off of, of even if it's a loss? Uh, yeah, that's something we preach. Um, it's just being a great team and being the best team. Uh, in the tournament, that's something that we pride ourselves on, and our chemistry. You know, we've had that for the basically the whole year. Uh, so, being a team is one of the most important things to us. Tony, I know it's obviously just after the fact, but can you kind of describe, summarize the emotions and of being in the two semifinal games like this last year and this year? And you you ran the whole game of emotions in the last in the last year. Can you kind of describe what it's been like to be part of this rivalry and these two games in particular? Well. It's a good question. I'm not sure I can give you a good answer. I'm, I'm a, maybe a strength of mine and a weakness of mine. I'm, I live in the present. And I don't, I mean, I remember the win last year, but uh, this is much more important today. Um, it's college basketball. Last year we got the, you know, we, we made the play necessary to win. This year we didn't. They did. So, you know, I mean, they're really good. Congratulations to them. And, uh, you know, I, I think Green's one of the better players I've seen in this league in a long time. And I've seen some pretty good ones over the years. They're playing in the NBA right now, and he's, uh, he's, he's terrific. So not a very good answer to your question. I'm sorry. But uh, uh, last year seems like a lifetime to me, you know. Uh, but uh, to, I thought last year's game was probably a better played game by both teams. I thought this game was a slugfest. I mean, just neither team was great, but both teams exhibited great desire, you know. And uh, uh, those are both – to a, to a basketball coach, those are both pretty games. Uh, but, uh, you know, very, very con contrasting games, I think. A couple postseason questions for you. One, what would it mean for you guys if you get, were to get picked to the NIT, just to, to kind of add that to what you guys have been able to accomplish there? And then also from Hofstra's perspective, um, their coach was in here yesterday talking about just how good the league's been this year. Is there a case to be made that, that you guys should get a second team in? Uh, whoever loses tomorrow night, not not you guys in the NCAA. They, yeah, um, I think the pro. Yeah, yes. I mean, our league's rated higher than it's ever been rated, and that includes the quote glory days you guys like to write about with VCU and Old Dominion. We're better than they were then. So, uh, uh, I mean, the league is really is strong. Uh, I think the problem is that we beat each other up a lot. You know, if there, if there were two teams in this league that were 16 and two at the end of the year, that'd be one thing. But I, what did our uh, our, our, what at Hofstra's record, they had what, four losses or something? Yeah, yeah. You know, four losses. So that, that hurts. I mean, beating each other up a little bit. But uh, so I don't know the answer to that. I mean, I, I will tell you this if we got two teams in it, we'd do some damage. The teams in it would do some damage. Uh, and I think teams are deserving of NIT bits. But uh, unfortunately, they don't let me vote on that. Uh, I'd rather vote on that than the presidency right now, I can tell you that. <laughs> Tony, I know it's only been 30 minutes or whatever, but you can sort of can you just sort of sum up the season? Your thoughts on what you guys were able to accomplish, especially winning 20 games for the third year in a row? Well, it's hard to when you're disappointed. You know, for the players in this room, uh, uh, in, in the locker room, uh, you know, I've, I mean, I'm just really proud of guys like Terry Tarpey and Sean Sheldon. You've been the backbone of our program for four years. I mean. You know, they, uh, I mean, they're, they're very different kids. Uh, 
Terry, naturally gifted, athletic, strong. I'd like to look like Terry one day in my life, you know, just a handsome guy, and he plays so hard. Um, and he's taking advantage of those gifts, I think. Uh, Sean, on the other hand, is a self-made player. I mean, he's just gotten better every year, but a cornerstone of our program, you know. And he, uh, I told him a month ago, Sean, you, you developed so much, we can't play without you right now. So it's hard to, to look at the big picture at this moment, but I will say that, you know, we're very proud of the consistency, consistent excellence we've shown. I mean, I, three years of 20 wins is, not a small thing for a mid-major conference or a mid-major program, and uh, very proud of that. And I think any time you're trying to build a program, you want to be good every year. And uh, I think five, six, seven years ago, we, we'd have a good year, and then we'd end up playing freshman the next year. You know, we, we lost a guy like Marcus Thornton, arguably the best player to ever play in our history, and came back with a really good team this year. Now, we're going to have a hard time replacing um, – Terry and Sean, but, you know, we think we've got good options. This, this guy right here on my right is pretty good, you know, and uh, uh, he, he's, uh, he's had to serve a little bit of an apprenticeship behind Terry, but I think Greg will be ready to step in for us next year. I think Jack Whitman, uh, Hunter Seacat guys can step in. So you know, we want to be consistent. We're proud of that, no, no doubt about it. All right. Thanks, guys.